Hey, what's up guys? Um, this is my latest project that I've been working on. Uh, the Arduino videos have been kind of slow since I've been working on this because everything's been going into creating this. But uh, I'm going to show you about what I've been making. I hope you like it. So what this is, is an animatronic hand. On this side, there's the hand. And it's made out of silicone uh, caulking. Uh, there is a tutorial. It'll be linked in the video description. It's pretty much created out of silicone, straws, paper, uh, and some string. And a lot of time to let it dry and uh, cure. But once it's done, it's, it feels kind of fleshy. And it flexes very easily, which makes it perfect for creating a hand. Now, this is the first generation hand I made. Uh, it does not flex all the way. This can get down to about here. This flex is a little bit too far out. The pinky is a little bit okay, and the thumb just really does not have enough motion. But it's more of a proof of concept at this point. Uh, this was built for a state competition, a state animatronics competition, and this took second place. A dancing penguin got first, so kind of don't like penguins right now. But um, uh, I'm going to be working on a second generation hand later on. And hopefully the second gen one will be able to completely flex and grasp objects. So it has two methods of control. The first one, or actually three methods, sorry. The first method is slider bars. You can move each finger very precisely from the computer. So if I just hit start, it unlocks the slider bars. And look at the hand. As I move the slider bars, we'll see, let's start with the index finger. You see it moves very precisely. You got the, uh, the middle finger that moves down. And yes, it can flick people off. Uh, it's able to do that. It's very cool that a computer could do that, but not exactly the nicest thing. Uh, you can do the ring finger. Uh, it has control over all fingers from the computer and the slider bars. Thumb really doesn't have a lot of motion, but that's just one method. It was pretty easy to put into the program, and it works okay. The second method is dancing to music. So I just simply click this button and it'll dance to Ready Steady Go with pre-programmed dance moves. So, let me show you that. Here it goes. Let me crank up the volume. So that's it dancing. The more interesting part though is the servos when it's dancing. Now this servo is out of whack. Uh, the tendons have to be manually tightened and then use software to just adjust them perfectly. And I ended up tightening this one and it got way out of like whack. So these servos are at a much different stance at rest than this one. So this is going to be the weird one that's out of, st uh, out of place. That's the second method. Uh, it also has lights. I didn't show you that. You can flip on cold cathode green lights. They're pretty awesome, uh, especially in the dark. If I turn off my lights, you can see that they're a lot cooler. Turn that back on. Now, this box closes, but I'll do that right at the end. Now for the third and final it's the coolest method of control, the glove. Right here, it's a glove. In each finger, there's a flex resistor. I got them all at SparkFun. It, it runs into a, an enclosure that I built, 
and inside that enclosure there's an Arduino, a blue Smurf with the antenna coming out the top, and a daughter board that I, uh, it's just a simple prototyping board that I soldered on a bunch of resistors to create 5 volt voltage dividers for measuring the uh, flex of the sensors. So what you do is you simply put the glove on like so. Uh, it doesn't have a band at the moment but I'll get it. You flip the switch in the back, the bottom light signifies power, top light shows that it's on. Then you go onto the computer program and you click the button to start user control and it now connects over Bluetooth, over a serial Bluetooth link and it's now connected to the glove and it's receiving data. So everything that I do in this glove is mimicked by the hand. Hold on. See the servos moving. And that's pretty much the third method of control. So it can be shut off again. You just hit that button, it now stops user control, and you can take the glove off. Just stuff it aside. It's now set up, and I can close the enclosure. So this flips down, cover that, fabric flips over. Now it looks nice, it's all set to go, and this is what I brought to the competition. And to get a little closer, let me take the camera off. Down on the bottom is where the electronics are. This box contains a Pololu um, 8 servo serial controller. That's where the RS-232 cable comes in and the power. There's also a blue LED light. Each of these servos is a high-tech HS-425 BB servo. They put out about 60 ounce inches of torque at the moment. It's not that much for gripping objects, but it'll grip a small object. Uh, and it's a you know nicely priced servo. This switch controls servo power so that you don't waste it. Blue light just went off. Now the servos can be freely spun. Uh, this light controls the cold cathodes. Uh, that's the cold cathode battery pack. And then the servos underneath. Now on the other side, um, let's see here. I have two energizer lantern batteries which power the project. They're wired in parallel. They provide a crap load of power and they're not going to die. So it gives the servos way more current than they're ever going to be able to use. That way they get full power and they're not lagging down. I was originally running it off four AA batteries and it kept crapping out and the microcontroller running on the uh, servo controller would crash because it just didn't have enough power. Uh, it's connected to the computer through a two serial port uh, PCMI or MCIA slot or whatever you want to call it into a laptop. USB to serial converter didn't work in this case. Don't ask me why. It was just I had a really crappy one. But this card's really nice. It's two hardware ports. The Bluetooth receiver is back here. I don't have one integrated into the notebook, but it uh, USB works fine. It's really tiny. The software was created in Visual Studio, uh, C sharp to be precise. Uh, so I'm going to post the source code, and I uh, hope you guys all like it. Thanks.